all about money because the biggest obstacle to this life is money yeah. and people and relationships. Yeah. But money really, I mean, if yeah. you can't afford it, you can't do it. Exactly. And if you've got a ton of debt behind you, you really can't do it. You, we mm -hmm. did spend time paying off every single debt before we left. Yeah. And that's, that's gotta happen. Yeah. Um, so really what this is going to be about though, is how we budgeted staying on budget and have we stayed close to budget? Okay. So we were an open book and probably cause we're total idiots. I don't know why we decided to just honestly put our budget out there for the whole first year of travel. <laughs> Because we watched Ow. other people do it and we're like, we, we, do it. we just were craving all these budget videos, trying to see if we could afford it. Right. And so we committed to doing that. And uh, in fact, we're a little slow. We are just about to release. Be sure you subscribe, by the way, so that you don't miss the rest of the series. But also because we're putting out our, our month nine, and, nine ten. and ten video any day, even though we just finished month 12. And then soon to follow, 11 and 12. And then that's the end of it. Our money is our business after that. Absolutely. But. <laughs> but for this first year, we really wanted to share with you. And yeah. so we kind of set up a budget where we said, okay, we're going to do $4,000 a month because we'd seen other people say $4,000 a month is a magic number. Um, <laughs> but we did it a little bit different because we kept a reserve of $1,000 a month just in case something yeah. went really We'd screwy. be fine if we were on $5,000 right. a month, but we're, we're trying our hardest to stick to $4,000. Yeah. The yeah. other thing that we but did... Let me just say... Well, I was trying to talk. spoiler. <sighs> but it's a spoiler for month 9 and 10. It was hard to record because we had to eat some crow. Yeah. We had to come out and be like, oh, yeah, we blew the hell out of our budget. But you gotta watch that video. That's a whole nother yeah, thing. Yeah, but we are catching up now, kind of, <laughs> hopefully, across the So, one of the things that we did in the last year that I worked is we paid off all of our debt and we prepaid a lot of our travel. Yes, and that was extremely helpful and we would highly recommend it because mm -hmm. we decided to start in Australia and New Zealand. We spent, what, like five months? None too cheap. Between the two. <laughs> and, and with some cruises thrown in there. Lots so of wine tasting it was ex there. Lots of wine taste. <laughs> lots of wine tasting. And it's expensive. So yeah. we knew that that's an expensive area of the world. We're gonna indulge our wine hobby. We're gonna go on some expensive cruises. We want to be on a cruise during the holidays. Yeah. That kind of thing. And so we prepaid everything that we could and that really helped. Yeah, it did. The other thing that we did is we started accumulating points. Right, so we've been doing that for a couple of years before we left, accumulating um, points on my like credit cards and accumulating the right cards with the right benefits to give us free stays and things like that. So we use a lot of that. Uh, if you want to see how we do that, we just came out with a video on um, travel, saving money on mm -hmm. travel, and that is a big factor in how we keep our budget. So, yeah, that, that's actually uh, part three of a four-part uh, series on, um, on travel planning. Yeah, travel planning. Yes. So you can check that out. But um, when you look at budgets, and we have a video on that too, and are, are travel budgets even relevant? Because mm. different people have different lifestyles, different people have different uh, tolerances, I guess you could say, and the accommodations that they keep. They have different desires for their activities. Yeah. Uh, they drink or they don't drink. That's a biggie. That's a biggie, a real mm -hmm. biggie. And we do drink. So, um, yes, we do. Uh, anyways, we are not alcoholics, though. Just no. want to point that no. out. Uh, anyways, we do spend money on wine tasting and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, those are big factors. And you have to look at your own life because no matter how much you think, did we think you would drink less? We, uh, did. we did. We did we say did. we would drink less. Yeah. Um, we would drink now. You are still yourself. Yeah. When you live as a nomad, you're still the same person you were mm -hmm. before. And if you think that all of a sudden, instead of mid-tier accommodations, you're going to go down to real cheap ones, or if you think, oh, I was a luxury traveler on vacation, but now I'm really going to, I'm going to uh, really rough it. Backpack it. No, you're not. <laughs> uh, if you think that you're going to stop drinking, that nomad life is the cure to your uh, habit of expensive wines. No. No, it is not. Now, well, maybe expensive if wines because you can't Asia, find them. If you're in Southeast Asia, you will just be drinking very cheap wine that costs a fortune. Yeah, that's but true. you will still pay it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that said, know yourself before right. you look at other people's budgets because you need to look at people the way that live the way you like to live. Absolutely, yeah. You know, and 
that's budgeting in the real world too. You gotta look at how you live and uh, yeah, you can tweak some adjustments, but the mm -hmm. honest truth is you are who you are. Mm -hmm. And so you have to respect that. Yeah, you're still gonna be yourself. Mm -hmm. So anyways, we are still being ourselves. We, we are. We've kind of gone back and forth a little bit mm -hmm. because of points we've gotten to live a more luxury than we normally would. Absolutely, for free. absolutely. Um, because of places we didn't have points, some places we decided to rough it a little bit more and save money. And mm -hmm. actually, I think we have gotten where, like we weren't a very hot island. It doesn't matter if the water's not that hot in the shower. Yeah. You know, we're getting better at that thing. We're, we're getting better at being more minimalistic with life because mm -hmm. we just have carry-on luggage. Yep. And um, since MacGyver, so we find ways to... I have a roll of duct tape that goes with me everywhere. We, we find ways to make do with whatever there is yeah. without just going out and buying a bunch of supplies for every Airbnb. Right. Although, I did buy a pillow here. She did. Just saying, we're in Malaysia right now. It's awesome. But, but you, she know, needed you a can't see neck pain all the time, and these are <laughs> fluffy pillows. So we did that. But okay. by and large, uh, you know, we have stuck to our budget overall. We yes. look, it, it's a rolling thing. Well, and again, when you talk about budgets, whether it be at home or the nomad life, you're not budgeting for the next four weeks. You're budgeting for a year, and you're mm -hmm. averaging out the 52 weeks. Yes. You know, and, and so yeah, that's that that's how you have to approach it. Um, and if you can keep that in mind, it becomes a little bit more flexible and a lot easier to manage. Now, managing money, never been my strong suit. I've always managed our money. Mm -hmm. We did go through a time when, because of an illness and some medication, my brain was really, really, really bad. We don't need to tell the story. And Tim took over the money. We he don't decided need to tell the story. I was making too many mistakes. Start. So a few months later, we got some notices of overdrafts from the bank. Look, and I, I said, well, let's just uh, balance the checkbook and see what's why? going on. And he said he had never balanced the checkbook, <laughs> ever, in the five months. And so you know what? our drawing turns out by like $5,000. Details, just minor details. <laughs> so I took over the money again. And she does a great job yeah. at it. <laughs> so I manage that, but... There's two kinds of money management when you're mm -hmm. doing the nomad life. So you've got the money management that is like, we put everything on credit cards that we can because right. we like points. You can do it your own way, but I pay off the credit cards. I shift money around between our accounts. Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, make sure we're paying our insurance payments or, you know, all those things that come up. I have no idea about any of that other than it's done on the computer. Okay, but you have a very important job that I'm glad that you do. I have a job. <laughs> he has a lot of jobs. Well, and the reality of it is, is that when you're traveling, you're also carrying a certain amount of cash, preferably not a lot, but you're carrying cash mm -hmm. and you're carrying some credit cards, not a lot. And you try to divide it up so that as you're traveling, things are stored in different places. Yeah. We're going to have a video on security. Mm -hmm. So this will be in that also, but, um, yeah, so that's my job. But, I'm the security yeah, guard. But not just that, like, we use an app called Travel Spend, uh -huh. and we literally keep track of every dollar. Yeah, and I do keep track of that. And he is pretty much the one in charge of that. Like, I put in our accommodations and spread them across the time we're there, and our insurance and things like that. But when it comes to, like, all the daily charges for mm -hmm. food, Tim is keeping track of whether we charged it, we paid cash for it. He's making sure it gets into travel spend. We kind of both work on putting it in, but well, um, but you kind of keep track of whether we're on track on a daily cash basis, mm -hmm. and I keep track of whether we're on track on a monthly, yearly basis. Right, and it's just easier for me because I'm the one usually paying for the different things. I'm the one carrying the cash. Mm -hmm. It's just, we try to consolidate it that way yeah. so that we don't end up losing stuff. And the nice thing about the nomad life is that you're completely flexible. Mm -hmm. So if you find out your budget's too, going by too fast, you know, you're spending it too fast. Like we were in Siem Reap, Cam Cambodia. <laughs> we had heard Cambodia was so cheap. Cambodia was not that cheap. No. Uh, so we were in Siem Reap. We were bleeding cash uh, on food. Well, and oh, touristing. Granted, we were touristing a lot and yeah. we were eating some pretty nice, good Western nice food. food. Yeah. And so Tim's keeping track on travel spend and it's giving you a daily average. Mm -hmm. It's telling you if you're on track with your budget or not. It's a great app. No, we were not on track. And <laughs> I keep noticing that in the travel spend. I'm like, babe, okay, no more drinks in the pool at night. 
we're gonna start eating at local places, way cheaper than the like French bakery we liked. And uh, so we were able to just, yeah, like claw it back, you know, like yeah. really change our you have You have to make those adjustments. Yeah, and be very careful. So you can adjust as you go along. You can even switch your accommodation to a cheaper one mm -hmm. if you need to. Um, you know, we've been able to stay in a comfortable place uh, in our budget where we right. feel like we have the money to pay for it all. Uh, but you do have to remember that you are spending ahead yeah. because you're always booking ahead. Right. So and like right now we're paying for cruises that we're not taking until uh, December, January, March. And, and that's why, you know, I told you in the beginning that you're not just budgeting for four weeks in front of you. You're really looking at a year because you're going to have to pay for flights and cruises if you do cruising or accommodations, mm -hmm. all of that stuff is, you know, those are charges that are done in advance. Yeah. I feel really comfortable that we have a financial advisor mm -hmm. that we meet with, well, whenever we want, but at least a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of looks at what we're spending. He runs the numbers. We tell him what's coming up and he's always looking going, yeah, you're doing fine still. Mm -hmm. You're doing fine still. Um, and that's very reassuring to yeah, us absolutely. to have that and to have him be transferring the bigger amounts around so right. that the right things are being sold and right. what have you. So one other thing that we have going on as far as our budget goes and management of money is that, you know, we talk about the fact that, you know, we have multiple accounts and we're transferring money around. One of the things that can always happen when you're out of country is your, uh, ATM cards and other things can get left in a machine because you forgot to take it out. That was not me. We won't discuss that one either. Yeah. Um, but you, we have, and it's a good idea to have someone back in the States who does have access to your accounts yeah. that obviously you trust highly. Yes. Um, just so that if something does go really wrong or south, they can go in and make physically go into the location and say, hey, this happened, yeah. or whatever. And, and try to help resolve because over the phone it's it's a tough thing yeah so uh, we definitely use multiple banks in case of our you know ATM cards getting compromised or stolen mm -hmm. uh, we also have left behind multiple credit cards because we have had some situations and some banks are not very good <laughs> <laughs> from they, a distance. They don't want to talk to you. Just saying, yeah. I will name, I will call out Wells Fargo, Barclay, and U.S. Bank. <laughs> we've dropped a lot of cards for them. <laughs> and it's, we've kind of regretted the new ones we've had because yeah. they are very hard to deal with and right. it requires a phone call to do practically anything. Right. And um, you got to remember, we're a day ahead plus 10 hours or whatever. Yeah. It's just, it's tough to they, do. They have systems that don't like VPNs and you have to do your banking with a VPN because they want you in the U.S. You know, okay, we'll do a videos on this in the future, but just saying, be sure you're covered and you have multiple things in multiple places and you have somebody in the U.S. that um, is on at least an account yeah. to help you if you need it. So... So, but we have stuck to our budget by and large. Now we've been in a pretty cheap area of the country the last few months in Southeast Asia. So yeah, so hopefully we'll uh, make up for what we spent, and we should do well. We're so scared to go back to the U.S. Honestly, the U.S. is the biggest challenge, <laughs> but we've got a reason, a lot of points there. Uh, a little bit of family um, yeah. generosity in their home. Uh, then we're on some cruises. We think we're okay there, but then we're headed to Europe and Europe's expensive. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. We can follow along. We'll still report on it, but we're not gonna report every detail. We're not doing it every month, but in general, we'll keep you posted, okay? We won't be doing it every two months the way we do yeah. it now. So in the we'll meantime, you can go back and watch what we've done and uh, keep watching and we'll, we'll be honest with you. Absolutely. As we always are. Hey, I just wanna take a moment to say thank you for tasting life with us. Thank you for hanging with us for a year. Yes. Their nomad anniversary or nomad, how do you say that? Our nomad anniversary. Nomad anniversary. Yeah. So uh, thank you for all of that. And you know what? Please like, please subscribe. We are not monetized, we'd like to be. But we need a whole lot more subscribers for that. Yeah, we really need subscribers. And yeah. thank you to those of you who are subscribed mm -hmm. and don't just watch because we really, really appreciate yes. that. We also really appreciate your comments and it does influence what we Absolutely. cover. So please keep comments coming. coming. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Taste Life With Us. Our website, www.tastelifewithus.com. Tons of info for you there. Also on 
uh, all your questions about us and the nomad life yeah. and getting going and our blog about how the nomad life feels, all my feelings. Yeah, I mean, there's I'm a lot of stuff out there. So help yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for everything you guys do. And I just want to say, get out there, taste life and enjoy.